Oh, okay. There you go. We have context. The president now infected with the novel coronavirus. There isn't much in this election year that can be described as normal. But among the most abnormal... She says she has a favored kid. Okay, that's kind of yikes. I think when parents say they have a favorite kid, that's really weird. Normal is that a group of lifelong Republicans, political Hassan. strategists for Republican candidates Trump for the last 30 years, the have banded together to mount a rogue offensive aimed at defeating the sitting president of their own party. They call themselves the Lincoln Project, named for the party of Lincoln, which they allege has gone so dangerously astray under President Donald Trump that they've decided to take the strategic and ad-making firepower they've trained for years on Democrats and turn it against their own. And the president's about- These guys are fucking scumbags. They are all just as racist as every other fucking Republican that they now shit on. Um, there is no indication that they have learned from their past mistakes or have repented for their sins. They just simply could not get jobs in the Trump administration Okay, no, don't say turncoats. I have no problem with turncoats if they're like legitimate. I think Peter Dow is a turncoat. Wet ass P word. Make that pullout game. From the neoliberal side to a leftist, and I like them. Out with COVID-19 is not slowing them down. The story. Bro, I watched, I watched 25K subs. Why do you need ad money? Because I'm a fucking filthy capitalist and I want to suck you dry. I want to get all the money from you as possible. Or maybe I have a contract and I'm contractually obligated as a contracted worker for a platform that I do not own. Um, it could be either or. I'll leave it up to your level of charitability to, to uh, decide. Um, tired of women. But isn't the enemy my enemy, my ally in this case? I mean, overall, I just don't fucking care. Like, I, I, I don't care that, like, Lincoln Project is... is like, I don't think the Lincoln Project is actually moving the needle. Like, I don't think that they do a good job with bringing people around. Uh, and, and I think that the counter to that, the worst uh, part of this process is that they are also rehabilitating the image of this, like, old Republican Party that actually was um, interested in doing their civic duty when that is not the case. Republicans are evil across the board, period. Most Democrats are evil too, but Republicans are like really, 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 really evil. And I fucking hate any initiative that tries to make it seem like they're so much different than Donald Trump when re the Republican Party is Donald is Trump's way. party. It has always been Donald Trump's party. The problem here is Donald Trump is also incompetent beyond uh, what uh, other administrations in the past have done. When it comes to cruelty, they are all the same. Okay. And any liberal that looks at Lincoln Project and thinks that they're doing a good job, any liberal that looks at the Lincoln Project and thinks that they are doing a good fucking job and that like, oh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, doesn't matter, okay? Does not fucking matter. Their entire purpose is to make it seem like there are some good Republicans and there is no such fucking thing, okay? There is no such thing as a good Republican. And I mean professional Republicans. Obviously, people that vote Republican... People that vote Democrat, some are good, some are bad. That doesn't matter. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about fucking people who have been duped. I'm talking about the professionals, okay? No such thing as a good Republican if they are professional Republicans, okay? Just remember that. I, I will never concede on this point. I fucking hate them. I despise them. I'm sorry. If you think that's, that's too divisive, then sucks to suck. But... That's just my take on it. Let's keep going. And oh, I'm... That's the wrong one. We'll continue in a moment. Yeah, Joe's live. How but he's would you rate your part. response to this crisis? I'd read it at 10. Some of the most gut punching, bare knuckled, and most wide. John McCain wasn't too bad. Exactly why I say all, all Republicans are scumbags. John McCain was a fucking gigantic scumbag, okay? One of the biggest, like, fucking. One of the one of the biggest financial criminals in in the Senate, and you're like, oh, he's all right. No, he's a piece of shit. Viewed anti-Trump ads of this election season. Trump failed America. Have not come from the Biden campaign. I'm a pro-life, gun-owning combat veteran. They've come from the Lincoln Project, trying to. Again, these ads are do not have a measurable impact on anyone beyond 
the the dc wonk class and beyond people that live in like california and like liberal safe havens who love hearing about how their uh how their republican friends have turned to the democratic party it's just to make liberals feel like there is a big constituency of never trump republicans when that is not the case and also they literally play these ads not on swing states but on on these areas in the dc for the dc beltway crowd and for the new york and california liberals that's the reason why these ads are played in those areas it is literally for twitter it's for the twitter uh it's for the political people on twitter it's bullshit it sucks convince fellow republicans he's a draft dodger in chief who despises the men and women he supposedly leads to elect a democrat what up greek it's time for decency it's time oh for sorry joke. they run ads they now run ads in swing states um i guess they didn't used to but hold on but wait there's more not only do they not only do uh they didn't used to run ads in swing states they got called out i guess they changed it um but also their ads talk about how uh orange man is a doo-doo butt and doo-doo man bad and i remember showing you guys an analysis a couple days back that like the ty those types of ads do not have a positive impact on voters one way or the other it's like one of the worst uh one of the worst measurable uh, messaging, uh, one of the worst like talking points that you can actually uh, put out there is like Donald Trump is bad. He's really bad. He's a doo-doo butt. Rather than focusing on policy positions. Oh, Biden. Don't cry for me. And this week they pounced with a biting ad. The truth is I will His name infect is you. Hassan. A parody of the hit Avida that's gone viral. I broke my promise. Won't keep my distance. They're the least effective ads. We are in a war for the soul of this country. Steve Schmidt, one of the founders of the Lincoln Project, is a longtime Republican strategist who worked in the George W. Bush. These guys literally when confronted with the reality of their war crimes under the Bush administration or all the horrible things that they did as far as like agitating against um agitating against a vote by mail like Sam Cedar has a really good take on this Mr. Pause at Sam Cedar where he talks about how these guys are responsible for all of the narratives that Donald Trump relies on right now and now they're literally attacking them now they're literally attacking Donald Trump for the same narratives that all of these rat fucks actually built in to the Republican Party communication strategies, okay? They literally are attacking the same shit that they cultivated and created personally. White House and ran John McCain's 2008 presidential campaign. How did serious Republicans decide to go rogue? We all had a conviction that there are millions of Republicans who look at this debacle and reject it. And what we thought we could do is talk to those voters in the language and the iconography that they understand, connect with them and persuade them, many of them, to vote for the Democratic nominee for the first time in their lives. Have you lost friends over this? For okay. sure. Of course. He launched the Lincoln Project Super PAC in December with that guy and the importance of that guy by the way this dude looks too much like the guy from breaking bad but i just want to point out something here so he ran john mccain's campaign can anyone remind me what the most significant thing was from the john mccain campaign not the bomb 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 iran not the obama is a good man he's not a muslim because you know muslims are not good men uh, uh narrative or, or any number of different things that john mccain originally was in support of and then was against because of obabe uh, like uh, climate change can you guys remember can you guys remind me one really important thing that they did in the john mccain campaign oh yeah the foundation building the foundation of like the out of the uh, just the complete psychotic tea party movement um by putting by elevating one of those psychotic right-wing uh populists 
elevating them to the VP slot. Yeah, Sarah fucking Palin, baby. The American people are Sarah Palin. Women. Not to be Enjoy confused with Lisa Ann about. playing Sarah Palin in the popular pornography Nailin' Palin. The OG Milky Mommy. A woman who was a heartbeat away from the presidency. Okay? If John McCain had won. That's Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin, you can literally draw a direct line from Sarah Palin getting the VP nod there to Donald Trump becoming the president. So this guy perhaps is single-handedly more responsible for the psychotic uh, fascist agitprop that's coming out of the Republican Party than anyone else. So miss me with that bullshit like, oh, dear, don't you know where... Oh, it's crazy. We've lost the soul of this nation. Oh, okay. Now on to this fucking dipshit. What's his name? Rick Wilson or whatever. God, those Back in December amazing. with seven co-founders, including Rick Wilson. Yeah. Me Rick Wilson, famous for looking like that guy from Breaking Bad. Okay. This guy is a huge racist and has always been a huge racist. You could like go and find all of his fucking tweets. Like every single thing that you're talking about. Every single thing that you talk about as far as like Republicans, every single thing that you're talking about with Republicans using racial agitation, like they're all, they, they didn't come out of nowhere. I mean, here, the Muslim community is pissed at the FBI. Dear FBI, more please. More student visas for the Muslim world. What could possibly go wrong? Let me get this right. We're expected to constantly apologize for slavery, racism, American Indians, and disco. Muslims, nothing. Is this all that's left England from we shall defend our island at whatever cost to look away, dear? They're Muslims. Mustn't offend. Oh, here's George Conway, Kellyanne Conway's, uh, Kellyanne Conway's husband. Just to be clear, and in response to inquiries, I still very, very strongly support POTUS's admin, admin policies in the executive order. Here's the deal. I don't care what flavor of Islam these dicks are. The flavor... The flavor that needs to be is bleeding out of a hole in their temple. Love it, retweeting Gavin McGinnis. I wrote this on why punks make great conservatives. Waiting for our oh-so-diligent media to tell me who is paying for the PR people with the Newton families. These are the very same people that were doing the exact same messaging that Donald Trump is doing. Now, this isn't cancel culture. This isn't like looking at old tweets to be like, I can't believe you. Oh, you're such a this is to show you. Man, Hassan. That <clears throat> these people are personally responsible for Donald Trump's messaging right now. Donald Trump is a demagogue. He might be personally racist. His name is okay? Hassan. But the reason why, why the Republican Party operates in the way that they do John. is because of these people in positions of power that 100% utilized that messaging to fucking win uh, a, a broader win broader support in the working class in America by using racial agitation, by pointing the finger at red herring, uh, red herrings, and, and also grossly expanding our surveillance state, which Obama also uh, expanded on. But again, they're horrific Islamophobes. They're racist as fuck. So for them to turn around and be like, oh, we just hate Trump's racism is silly because they themselves are responsible in a, in a really meaningful way for a populist and racist leader like Donald Trump to take control over the Republican Party. Media consultant and ad maker for Republicans like Rudy Giuliani. Also, what up, Myth? Sorry. Everybody, stop fucking crying, okay? I'm in the middle of a rant. And Marco Rubio. Veteran Republican strategist John Weaver, who also worked with McCain and John Kasich. George Conway, conservative lawyer and husband of Kellyanne Conway, herself recently diagnosed with COVID-19. And Reed Galen, who worked on both George W. Bush's campaigns. Together, more than 200 years of Republican Party activism. Like, some of these people literally stole the election, personally stole the election, or at least the Florida results, from Al Gore, okay? They literally fucking personally did this. And now they're acting like they want to fucking re-elect the Dem- or they want to elect the Democrat. Like, it's nuts. That guy that worked for George H.W. Bush, like, that guy is horrible. Yes. 
Chat, please don't pogo with someone when I say hi to y'all. What up, Myth? Have you given up your careers? None of us will ever work in Republican politics. Again, we, we joke that like some of the explorers who came to the new world, they were incentivized by the captain when he burned the ships, that there was, that there was no return going back. Working from their homes across the country, the Lincoln Project team likes nautical analogies. They call themselves a pirate ship, with Reed Galen helping chart their course. We do not represent any candidate. We don't represent any campaign. We don't represent any political party. So it allows us a great deal of freedom. You know, we sail the seas, and when the opportunity presents itself, you know, we unfurl the Jolly Roger and go to town. Ready for four more years. These buccaneers have made a name for themselves with malicious attack ads, churning out new Hassan. ones almost daily, one most released cost-free on social media. Good. Okay, ship it around to the group. Let's get an approval on it. Okay. okay. Rick Wilson is in charge of the ads. Who are you aiming for? What kind of a voter? So those independent-leaning men, those college-educated Republicans. There is not a, is a bigger made-up narrative than never-Trump Republicans. At a time when, or not even at a time, throughout Donald Trump's entire, entire uh, four years in office, his approval rating amongst the Republican voters has, I think, dipped below 90% three times. Okay? These guys are just extracting wealth from the center-right liberal base of voters that vote for the establishment Democrats that love to have these sorts of people in their circles who then turn around and say, well, I have a lot of diversity in opinion. I mean, after all, we have Republicans in our... Uh, we have Republicans sucking on hors d'oeuvres at our, uh, you know, big-profile elitist parties as well as Democrats do. Um, after all, we just want what's best for... We just want what's best for America. I mean, come on. Like, that's it. That's the that, that's that's their entire purpose. These guys are just taking as much money as they can from dumbass liberals who just want to feel good about a non-existent base of support actually turning heel and like de like leaving the Republican Party and like fucking voting for Joe Biden. Okay? That's it. They're like they're doing kind of the same grift that Tim Pool does, but on the other side, okay? Tim Pool likes to make Republicans feel like he is a Democrat that is voting for Donald Trump. These guys are actually Republicans that make it seem like they're uh, going to vote for Joe Biden. Some of them might actually even vote for Joe Biden. It doesn't matter, though. Ultimately, they're still fucking Republicans and conservative through and through. And their entire purpose is to make a lot of these uptight liberals feel better about themselves because, oh my God, even Republicans, smart Republicans agree with me that my candidate is much better than the other one. Ultimately, never forget, all Republicans are evil as fuck. They all work to advance Donald Trump's agenda. And Donald Trump's agenda is the Republican Party's agenda. It always has been. It's not a chicken or the egg situation. Donald Trump is literally very rarely ever strayed away from the Republican agenda. Uh, the notable exceptions being tariffs on China, but that's pretty much it the suburban Republican women. We understand where these voters are. We understand who they are and how they think. And Leslie, it's a game of small numbers. I mean, Donald Trump won this election by 77,000 votes in three states. You basically have endorsed Joe Biden. We have. We have endorsed Joe Biden. Yes. This is a deranged it feels like, her. I'm sure, to the other Republicans is, is a total betrayal. Republicans can call us, you know, betrayers of the faith all they want. We, go to, we sleep well at night. John Weaver feels it's the party that's betrayed him. I mean, look, Leslie, we've gone from caring about character, rule of law, defending the Constitution, a cogent national security policy, free trade. Where are all those issues? Imagine if you travel the country for 30 years fighting for Republican principles and you learn it was all a lie. No one cares about all the issues that we fought for. How painful is it for you? to turn against the Republican Party. Yikes! This is why neoliberals are just as fucking filthy and stupid as the same vulturous, immoral Republicans that they interview, okay? 
I hate this. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. The fuck is wrong with you? Why do you extend a crumb of relevance to these fucking sickos, dude? I hate centrists. I actually hate centrists so much. Oh, how devastating was it when, when the Republican Party did not want to use you because Trump had his own, Trump had his own style and his own consultants so they didn't want to use you so you decided fuck the republicans and that there isn't all that much difference between the republican party and the democratic party so we will go and take money from republicans then oh how much did it hurt your fifis this guy's an actual neoliberal not a meme neoliberal exactly exactly do you ever sit around and talk about your repudiating your life in a way? Oh yeah, my of course we do. God, I mean, no, they're fucking not. No, they're not. I mean, we're busy, but there are moments of melancholy about it. No doubt. And Ammo JD is correct. That's not a new development, though. When I worked in government, we all attend the same events, etc. The money people don't care what side you're on. Exactly. That's why they fucking give funds to each side almost evenly and only change the, 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 the money faucet in one way or the other, depending on who's winning or what they can get out of the winners, okay? People don't give a fuck. Wake up, everybody. The people in D.C. are not actually, genuinely, legitimately one side over the other, okay? There's only one side that they care about, and that's the money side. Like, and the same, by the way, this is the same in media, too. Like, I despise a lot of these people that I, uh, that I talk about in reality, okay? Like, I, I despise them. When I get to sit side by side with them, when I'm going to do a fucking TV appearance or something, in, in the ad breaks, I don't actually fucking buddy up to them or cozy up to them. I shit on them, okay? I told Larry Elder, how does it feel to be a, a, a black conservative that... Uh, doesn't get as much mileage because the other black conservatives that actually do get popularized under the Trump administration are literal fucking white supremacists. Like, you don't go as mask off as they do, so you are irrelevant. I literally said that to Larry Elder on an ad break because I am not his fucking friend. I'm not going to be his fucking friend. And same with, like, all these other people that I was, uh, that, I, that I've appeared side by side with. That is not the reality. That is not the fucking... He responded by getting mad at me because he's friends with JLP and said JLP uh, has, like, homeless people that he houses. He said Jesse Lee Peterson houses actual homeless people. Um, and he got mad. But... So... He's right, though. JLP is a very interesting guy. Like, Jesse Lee Peterson literally fucking... Houses homeless people and shit, like black homeless people and shit, like does actual fucking mutual aid and then is a white supremacist at the same time. It's very weird. Um, anyway. So what was I saying? Oh, but that in my personal experience, especially like going to the White House Correspondence Dinner that weekend was the worst experience that I've ever had in my entire life because all of those people, they love each other, okay? They get so fucking stoked when Scaramucci, they get so hype when Scaramucci enters the room with Kellyanne Conway. They're like, oh my God, like every fucking liberal journalist, all these other people, like there are very few people in media that I like. You know who I like. I have them on here all the time or at least talk about them uh, all the time. There are very few people that I like. Uh, most of the Intercept, all of the Intercept actually, despite uh, my, my disagreements with them, those are the people that I actually like. They fucking, they don't suck. They're real. They're honest. You like your echo chamber, obviously? Yes. That's why I spend uh, an insane amount of time dunking on people in my chat within my echo chamber. Yeah, MSNBC loves these people. And it's very, very frustrating. It's morning again in America. One of the most effective political ads ever was Ronald Reagan's Morning in America from 1984. This afternoon, 
In May, the Lincoln Project made a version that flipped the original on its head, adding the letter U. Hey, they should do a Willie Horton ad again. You know, will they will they flip that Willie Horton ad too? Maybe they'll do it for Joe Biden again. To morning. There's morning in America. Today, more than 60,000 Americans have died from a deadly virus Donald Trump ignored. The day it was released, the ad got more than half a million views. Among them, the president, who unleashed a tweet storm at 12.46 a.m., calling the Lincoln Project losers. Mr. President, if you want to make any comment about this Lincoln Project ad... Yeah, no, I saw it. Morning. It's a group of major losers. They're Republican losers, losers and they oh, should call it you. the Losers Project. Okay, thanks. The president ah, attacked all of us. Fucking got him! Dude, come on. Come on. I love... God, he's so fucking stupid, but he's so entertaining. Jesus Christ. He's such a baby. Like, he's such a fucking big, wet baby. Ah, Lincoln, Lincoln Project, I call him the Losers Project. By name, called us losers, and we raised $2 million in 48 hours. So he's helped. Uh, yeah. By the way, the Lincoln Project report is spending nearly $1.4 million through March. Almost all that money went to the group's board members and firms run by them. Hmm. The Super PAC spent nearly $1 million with some strategy, uh, strategic communications firm run by the Treasurer Reed Galen. Another 225 went to Tusk Digital, a company run by Lincoln Project advisor Ron Steslow. Both companies received little business from other federal committees since Trump's inauguration. Wow. Wow. Good job, guys. Keep giving them money. Keep giving them money, which, by the way, they turn around and, and, and fund into uh, predominantly ad buys in the DC circle. Very cool. It's literally a self, it is a, a cycle. It's a, the cycle of grift that keeps the grift alive. Ooh, love that. Love that, dude. It's great. It's pretty genius, but I hate it. It's just like liberals are so fucking stupid. The new centrists are better than hard rights. They're not. They are. That's this the point. They're still hard right, number. dude. Stop. Stop. They're still fucking hard right. They are the reason why the right is so fucking hard. This is okay. Range. They're not actually number. centrists. The actual centrists are the establishment Democrats who are center-right. These guys are literally fucking far-right. They're just upset that Donald Trump gave the game away, okay? Oh, blah, 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 blah. they themselves are the ones they themselves are the ones who created this narrative within the republican His party the like super Hashan. fucking racist narrative they like personally they personally work to do this they are the og grifters they built an entire political movement around hating others only what way they can motivate white rural voters created trump through their own compromise of ethics and beliefs fuck them look lib bizzle is right he runs in these fucking circles, okay? If you don't trust me, trust the liberal. These guys, alongside, these guys, alongside Fox News, literally made careers out of fucking racial agitation and, and, and this sort of uh, propaganda. And then now they're turning around, they're like, oh, we're so sorry. We're, they're not even saying sorry. They're, that's the worst part. If they said we're sorry for what we did, then that's one thing, okay? If they ever said, we're sorry for what we did, we were wrong, I saw the fucking light, okay? That would be one thing, but they don't even say that. They say the past Republican Party was very different than the Republican Party of now, and that's not true. It's the same Republican Party. This Bush Republicans range. are just Perfect. as fucking Middle horrible project. as Happy Trump Republicans are.
Fox News allows more negative ads on me than practically all the other networks combined. Not like old days, but we will win even bigger than 2016. Roger Ailes was the greatest. Fox News wants to be accepted by their cohorts. OAN is conservative. Yeah, he's right. OAN is the future of the conservatives. As in, psychotic, mouth-breathing, tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorists. Helping you. He bought us instant credibility. And gave them a strategy. Here's what Trump's own people are saying about him. Create ads deliberately designed. He's an idiot. John Kelly, Trump's chief of staff. To get under the president's skin. I don't think he's fit for office. I have the most loyal people. We have a standing by on... These ads are mathematically calculated to have Austin cream his pants when he watches them, okay? That's it. That's it. Some fucking crusty ex-coal miner who was a union guy who voted for Obama twice and then voted for Donald Trump is not going to turn around and be like, Oh, goddamn, John Bolton! John Bolton said that Donald Trump is a doo-doo head? Well, I guess, I oh, fuck yeah. I guess hey, I'm going to go vote for these well, pussies hey, now the on the Democratic side because these today, fucking don't even know centrist dipshits who I already despise, just said, hey, Elizabeth, the old guard of the Republican Party who I already well, fucking I despised when I was a Democrat and still do because Donald Trump Dems. shits on him all the time. Dems. Yeah, oh, the, those guys actually man, convinced me. What did Libbizzle say? This is the only thing they've done to add any value to this election. They've gotten into his thread by spending millions on ads placed in between Fox News shows. Yeah. Fox News in Washington, D.C. With Fox and Friends, Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity every night. Is that because he watches? Or? Yes, because we know he's in the residence with his Super TiVo watching. Why is... Again, these are idiotic ad buys, okay? These ad buys are so idiotic, Brad Parscale did them. You want to know why? Remember when I criticized Brad Parscale's ad buy strategy when I said, what a fucking strange thing that he's doing, buying Republican TV ads in Washington, D.C. Why would anyone in the right mind ever fucking ever, and I mean ever do ad buys in D.C. as a Republican? Hmm, what a strange thing to do. Do you think they're going to fucking swing it? Do you think that's why? You think they're? you think D.C. is fucking gonna be blue no they're doing that because they wanted to please donald trump just like these fucking dipshits are doing that that also hurt donald trump or hurt his fifis that's it Foking him a good strategy every time donald trump loses his mind and throws things at the wall because a lincoln project ad is up that takes the whole campaign off track there's one thing you never get back in a campaign and that's a lost day are you concerned that you're stooping to the president's level. Oh God, I hate of being mean. I'm sorry, dude. I hate liberals so much. I hope so. There's always <laughs> a reflexive like that. This is the reason why I hate them. Like her, her fucking reaction is the reason why I hate them. Okay. Oh, are you being mean to Donald Trump? Are you stooping to his level? No, I like being mean to Donald Trump. Oh, president's that's so funny. This is like literally just like a uh, circle jerk all the way. Level of being mean. I hope so. There's always a reflexive <laughs> oh, yeah. for, sort of- For those of you who uh, don't know, the Trump campaign spent more than 1.5 million in the DC market and one of the most liberal country, one of the most liberal in the country, but home to the president's obsessive cable watching habits since the end of April. That's more than he has spent in Virginia and New Hampshire. His name is Hassan. Um, Do-gooder instinct to say, oh, I hate negative ads. People do hate negative ads, but negative ads work. What do you need in the short term? I need senior messaging. That's right. The worst part about it, you want to know the worst part? These guys are actually good strategists, okay? They are. These motherfuckers are actually good. If they wanted to make good fucking negative ads that truly went against their worldview and their principles, they would be fucking pumping negative ads in swing states that correspond to the actual messaging required uh, for them to be effective, okay? They would be running negative ads about Donald Trump trying to fucking dismantle the Affordable Care Act. They would be running negative ads about Donald Trump saying he's going to fucking uh, take down Social Security for old people. They do it every now and then, but usually most of their fucking 
most of their work revolves around ooh orange man bad isn't that funny that's great okay if they weren't such fucking cynical grifters all uh, who with the entire purpose of just trying to line their pockets with liberal cash because they're pissed off that the donald trump uh campaign did not want to work with them the old guard they 100% could effectively launch negative ads because liberals are pathetic. Liberals don't run. Uh, very few liberals have good targeted negative ad campaigns. They're not as good as Republicans are. It's like how, yeah, bow bow. It's like how 80% of my vegan activism is in Twitch chat shit posting. I love the system. For Florida. Last the month, the Lincoln Project got their staff tested for COVID and moved them from around the country into temporary headquarters in Utah. One of the reasons we're here. We joined them for their first TV interview as a group remotely. You're a pod. You're a bubble. We're a pod. You're like the NBA. Yes, except not, not at all. Not as tall or athletic. <laughs> right. If we're going to go to North Carolina, now's the time to do it. Because Much of the focus here in the home stretch is on this team, led by Mike Madrid, former political director of the California Republican Party. They run the day-to-day -day strategy and ad targeting in an expanding number of battleground states. We've been one of those sons. One of those sons of bitches is literally in here. By the way, one of those, one of those young, uh, uh like staffers or whatever. One of those people is 100% in here, and I'm I'm suspecting that you're like a fucking long time subscriber too, because you constantly. Some of you constantly fucking send me Lincoln Project videos and have been for a very long time. Been focused like if a I laser find beam out, on dude, you're banned. Certain segments of the Republican electorate. What about ads specifically for Republican women? The one that analytically has proven the best is an ad called Memories, which is an ad that speaks to the loss of the normalcy of life during COVID. These are the memories COVID took from us. A child's birthday. We find that women move off of Donald Trump first, and then often His their husband will follow Hassan. behind them. COVID has robbed America. They're targeting COVID ads to seniors too, while they say Morning in America continues to be effective with voters in hard hit Rust Belt counties. In the last year. Military themed ads work across the Republican spectrum, and they're playing up reports that the president called fallen soldiers losers, losers and suckers. suckers. I think that there is a play there for suburban moms. With the help of data analysts, including one who'd worked in Major League Baseball, it's certainly the least impactful. They are trying to take advantage of a shift they're seeing in the Republican landscape. The real dividing line in the Republican Party is between college educated and non college educated voters. And what we're seeing is when Donald Trump starts to push messages like law and order or defends, you know, the Confederate flags and Confederate monuments. He does seem to be able to coalesce a small number of non-college educated workers in the Rust Belt states, but at the same time, he's pushing white college educated workers in the Sun Belt states out of his column. This is true. And by the way, that's not because of the fucking Lincoln Project. That's because of Donald Trump. So if you ever turn around, if you ever turn around and, and fucking say that like, Lincoln Project was responsible for this. By the way, that, that number is still, um, especially when you talk about Republicans, that number, like how many of those people are actually Republicans or Republican voters, that number is insignificant or not as significant as the way they make it seem. But if you were to ever turn around and be like, that's Lincoln Project's doing, fuck off, that's not the case. It's a reverse twist on the old Southern strategy where Republicans used racist appeals to attract white voters in the South and they're trying to capitalize on it. What we see in the South is more and more people in high-tech industries saying, this is a politics that I reject. So where are you most focused then? Are you focused in the North Rust Belt or in the Sun Belt? Yes. Both. <laughs> yes. This fall, the Lincoln Project- And they're also focused on Republican senators, attacking them brutally on their fealty to President Trump. Maine deserves a leader, not a Trump stooge. I am all in. They've spent more than a million and a half dollars just against Lindsey Graham. We'll wait to the next election. Lindsey Graham has told us who he is. Attacking him for his flip-flop on filling the Supreme Court vacancy. And you could use my words against me and you'd be absolutely right. Don't be fooled. 
The Lincoln Project wasn't founded by principled conservatives. The Lincoln Project has become- Oh, they were fake conservatives. Oh, got it. Oh, oh, I, I, I didn't realize that the fucking people that worked on the John McCain and George W. Bush and George H. W. Bush campaigns were actually the fake conservatives. Oh, thank you, dude. Wow. I mean, who was a fucking conservative then? Like the, the Sig Heiling leader of the American Nazi Party? Like, is that the only one who's a real conservative in this fucking country? What are you, crazy? Come a lightning rod for criticism from Trump allies. What a nasty bunch of son of a guns. For being traitors, mercenaries, for taking gun. large donations from Democrats, and in this, just to maintain their relevance. I've been agree seeing, agree, and say the Sun Belt states will be what will cost Trump. These states have historically been considered swing states before. I'm young and only can remember Midwest manufacturing states and Florida, Virginia being the swing states. We'll see. And I'm going to quote. They're the failed. only place that I have conceded that Lincoln Project's messaging is, except uh, Lincoln Project's messaging actually has a real constituency is Arizona. Even then, I don't know how big of a constituency there is for the Lincoln Project uh, messaging for never term Republicans, but it's because of the unique nature of John McCain that uh, so many wealthy suburbanites uh, actually. This is a deranged pervert. My bitches people high. Actually uh, have uh, never Trump leanings in the state of Arizona. But even then, according to 538, Trump has to win Arizona to win the election. And even then, Mike Madrid is a really good strategist, won a lot of tough races in blue territory for the GOP. I'm not saying they're bad strategists. I'm saying that they're piece of shit grifters. I'm, they are good strategists. They. They literally worked for the Republican Party. Of course they're good strategists. Republicans don't give a fuck. Like, they don't care. Like, if you win, you're on board, okay? It's not like the Democratic Party, where you can be a fucking strategist and, and, and win by being honorable in your defeat or something. Uh, and this is, like, straight out of uh, what Felix was talking about the, the other day on Chapo that I, like, still think about. It, it's really good perspective that he has on this. big man, Hassan. You can fail upwards in the Democratic Party as a strategist, okay? You can absolutely fail upwards in the Democratic Party as a strategist. Look at every single person that has worked with Hillary Clinton, okay? Those people did not automatically all get fired. They all, they all are still working in the Democratic Party, okay? And you can fail as a candidate and still fail upwards in the Democratic Party. Uh, look at John Ossoff. We the um, don't need like free college every single one of these people, every single one of these people, and other superior as long as they fail, the but fail with, uh, uh, fail with honor and dignity, Arjan? then yeah, they're good. They're good Any in the Democratic Party. Republicans, they're not the same. You fucking, you have to win. They're animals. Okay. You have to win and win at any cost. So of course they're good. They're good strategists. It's just that it's fucking annoying because they're only strategizing to annoy Donald Trump rather than actually trying to secure a, a victory for the Democrats because they don't have any democratic principles. They have no progressive principles. That's the whole point. Their understanding of their own base as Republicans is infinitely better than the, the democratic consultants and the way that they understand their own base and what their base requires. But because the democratic party does not care about its own base, does not care about galvanizing its own base beyond like saying orange man bad or Republicans are terrifying, then that's the reason why you can have people that fucking literally work for George W. His Bush turn around son. and work for those liberals and get celebrated within those liberal circles. Strategists who are doing this for the money. The easiest way in the world for a Republican strategist to make money right now is to shut up and say nice things about Donald Trump. So clearly we're in the wrong line of work. But they've also drawn fire from some on the left for their own role in creating the Republican politics they now decry. Do you bear any responsibility, you personally, for bringing the country to where it is? When I look at the party and I see what it's become, I think that I was naive about how deeply Hassan. embedded the Anyways, racism issue was in the party. Do you feel at all? No, Were no you naive when you literally weaponized Suburban racial Night. agitation Anyways, then? It's a two billion year old like Rockstone. Motherfucker, you, you brought Sarah Palin to the table. Like, 
That's insanity. That's insanity to be like, oh, oh, don't you know I was naive. I didn't know the Republicans were racist. Come on. Yeah, dude. I didn't realize the Republicans were racist when I literally tried to do everything I can to make sure that black people can't vote as a part of our electoral strategy. I didn't realize the Republicans were racist when I very actively shit on Muslims over and over. I was just naivete, dude. That was total naivete uh, on my part. Oops. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Sam Cedar here. Uh, he has a really good take on this. He says, considerably more than some. Three quick points. These guys will make plenty of money off this and future projects. They gave us I prototype like Trump, Sarah Palin, and Paul map. Ryan promoted Great the chat. California mail-in results were suspicious narrative big time. Because they must them. Sock Dems on every single, and every sure single GOP tall. operative no, is the reason why you we have Donald Trump. Like okay, every Trump. single GOP Please. operative is personally, like personally Ryan responsible for Donald Trump. For and anyone who tries months. to tell you otherwise is doing a disservice. That you're making amends. And in all politics, you can look back on things with, uh, with honor or regret or what have you, I think I'll look back on this. I think all of us will look back on this as something we did in the cause of the country. They've raised more than $60 million thus far. Write that out. And they're convinced that if they get just 4% of Republicans to switch sides, they'll succeed in their goal of defeating Donald Trump. What about the insult that everything you're doing is just uh, playing to the choir? You're well, just because... reaching Trump haters they already hate him. I think that we have hurt him, we have cut him, we have defined him, we have provoked him. There was not a glove proverbially laid on him for a really long time. His and I think we're amongst Michelle. the first groups to effectively do that. Well, you know, you say that, and he still has 90% of the Republicans. Every poll you see, he could win. Well, well sure. Yeah. Of course he could. Donald Trump could win. This is why, you know, we don't sleep a lot and why we're constantly pushing to expand our envelope because you can't take chances with Donald Trump. We're not out of this fight till the fight is. Jank, here's Jank in 2018. Steve Schmidt attacks Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with dishonest progressivism, says as bad as Trumpism. I want to thank MSNBC for showing that they are the home of the establishment. They hate real progressives. Steve Schmidt is a tool. I didn't attack her motives or her intentions. Your anger and ignorance and dishonesty are simply the mirror of Trump's. You are as smug, arrogant, and as nasty as Stephen Miller and all the rest. You just wear a different jersey. Yes. The guy whose name you literally can't say, who's a, a, a fucking brown Muslim immigrant, is the same as the guy who literally wants to purge the brown Muslim immigrants, and very openly so. Um, incredible. Incredible. In that point, you got to be like, Steve, can you, can you just say my name? How, how do you think you say my name? And then watch him fucking be like, ah, Chunk, why, Weezer? Like, huh, interesting. Also, how the fuck did Jen get ratioed by Steve Schmidt? God, that's embarrassing. Okay, let's finish this before the show, the Trump show starts. Who is the voice behind the Lincoln Project's viral social media posts? Go to... Here's the overtime one. The social media of the Lincoln Project. Over to Keith for your comms report. So the headline is we hit 2 million followers on Twitter. My name is Keith Edwards. I am the communications director for the Lincoln Project. I work on social media. I work on our rapid response videos. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. I think what people appreciate about the Lincoln Project is that we... Pog, dude. He, no, yo, they said it right. Dude. It's so funny. It's like... 
I mean, this is literally hashtag activism, dude. Hashtag activism. We are authentic, we're honest, and we're concise. We tell you the truth, we tell you exactly how we see the truth, and we don't really bullshit about it. Can I say bullshit? I'm sorry, it's online. <laughs> 2.6 million. Holy shit. Good day, good day, good His day. His name we is We have founders Hassan. that are the very adept at how Twitter works, even though that might not have been something that they were thinking yes. about immediately. It was definitely in the DNA of the project. An American president embraces extremists. I just, I will never, I hate them so much. I'll never trust pervert. them. Pervert. Half of them should be in jail. Most never Trump Republicans that were Bush era war criminals should literally be in jail right now. Or maybe they're serving out the end of their sentence and therefore have His a pathway to rehabilitation Hassan. as a consequence of their uh, not that long uh, jail sentence. Okay, that's. That's the real justifiable, uh, just future that I would want to live in. And instead, we're like welcoming them with open arms and like actually fucking celebrating George W. Bush and forgetting about his uh, legacy. Okay. And half the time they just fucking steal memes. And incites them to violence. Now, boys, stand back and stand by. Twitter has taught me that we're very segmented into our groups. Um, there's the liberal side, there's the very far right side. Being part of an organization that doesn't tie itself to one end to the other, you kind of get pushed back on all sides. <laughs> so it makes being on Twitter, if nothing short of entertaining, because there is always someone that is upset with what you're doing. <laughs> Making a tweet is relatively easy. I think of a tweet, I write the tweet, I send the tweet. I know that a lot of political campaigns have about 20 different rounds of approval before they can go out, but they have really entrusted me with being able to carry the brand online. We can really respond in the moment and we can respond authentically. I wanted to always play it down. Hashtag Trump new got more than 6 million views across channels. Congrats to Kate. Thank you Congrats. so much. I think the goal is to try to find the nugget in what's happening and expressing it in a way that people can identify with, but hopefully in a way that they might not have ever been able to say themselves. Like, what's shocking about the Bob Woodward tapes isn't that we know Donald Trump lies, it's that he, he knows what he's doing. Your administration is falling apart. Falling apart. Your campaign is running out of cash and your personal finances is so broke. Ouch. His actions indicate that he has no respect for our Constitution. He has no respect for the rule of law. He is completely unable to, um, to keep his worst instincts at bay. If we are attacking him at the level of which he has been attacking the country, I don't think that's a troll. I think that's just righteous anger. I think the country is ready for someone to kind of punch back at the bully. And so I don't think that's trolling. I think that's um, getting even. The reason I got into politics was to defeat this president, to be able to have a small part in hopefully defeating the worst president our country has ever seen is, um, I feel very grateful. I do feel that's like a level of service. I mean, listen, not everything we send out is like, <laughs> Like, you know, like also like tweet like pretty funny memes. If you're in the hospital and you're feeling really bad, we, we have hundreds of thousands of doses. That are it's not all very serious all Regeneron. the time, but being able to fight someone that has brought the country so much pain and chaos, like I'm just, I just feel like immensely grateful. Is this perfect timing for the Trump rally? This democratic Italiophobia has gone too far.